Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. I've been doing some mount collecting recently. Throughout the game, there are various mounts tied to dungeons which you can farm daily, or raids which you can farm weekly. Some of them are pretty cool, so I thought I might take you along with me and make a video showing what they all look like, where they're located, and at the same time, I'll share some tips that'll help you farm them faster. If you want to skip straight towards the mounts and skip this little introduction, I'll have a link to a timestamp for you in the description. So, for this one, my restrictions are all of the ones locked to dungeons, raids, and weekly outdoor raid bosses. And for part 2, I'll make another video for all of the mounts that you can farm in the world. Using the term farm lightly here because, honestly, a lot of them are tied behind long respawning rare elites. The first tip I'll share is that, before heading out, is to pick up a race tabard for one of your faction's major races. These give you reputation upon killing enemies in dungeons and whatnot, and you may as well pick up some rep when you're doing this farming since there are some mounts tied behind those as well. You can find them randomly throughout their appropriate city, and I'll have some links for you in the description if you need help. Next is, for some of these raids, the mount drops from the last boss, so it can be pretty time consuming to go through the whole place over and over. Well, if you have multiple characters, you can use a trick to make things a little easier on yourself. Take Ulduar for example. On your main character, kill everything up to yog -Saran, and then, zone out, make a group in your group finder titled Don't Join or something along those lines, and put on Auto Accept. Log on an alt that's parked right outside of Ulduar, join the group you just listed on your main, zone in, and then kill yog -Saran. If you did it right, you should get the same lockout as your main, and you can go right to the last boss, and the best part is that your main doesn't get saved, so you can keep doing this for as many characters as you have. And if you don't get it for that week, next week just click the extend raid lock button on the rating tab on your main and try another round. Like I said, you only need to clear through the majority of it one time. And from there, you just rinse and repeat the process. This is how I got my Mimoron's head and invincible mounts. You can do the same thing for invincible. He only drops from heroic mode which you probably haven't unlocked on your alts yet but you can bypass this by zoning into 25 mana normal and then switching to heroic while you're inside. You will have to wait until your alt becomes leader though. It'll give it to you after a minute or so of your main being offline. Now this only works for some raids, as I said Aldor and ICC. I believe it works for the normal versions of the Cataclysm raids, but not heroics. I also tested it for Mythic Draenor raids and it didn't work, so it doesn't work for everything. And, another thing I like to do is park any unused alts right next to the dungeon, raid, or world boss that you're farming. So daily or weekly, you can quickly log in and knock it out as fast as possible. It's much more preferable to globetrotting around Azeroth. And, one last thing I want to mention is that I will be giving some drop rates for all of these, but it's just based off of wowhead samples which haven't been known to be the most accurate. In general, they should be accurate, but don't take them as 100%. I guess the most orderly way to do things is to start from vanilla and then work our way to legion starting with the daily farms and then do the same for the weeklies. First up we have the raven lord located in the heroic sethic halls dungeon in the Terakar forest. This is in the Alkandun area and the sethic halls is the eastern dungeon. The boss you're looking for here is the giant raven Anzu. He has a 1% chance to drop this mount and he only appears on heroic mode. Next, we have the Swift White Hawk Strider, also known as the Chocobo Mount. You can find this in the Heroic Magister's Terrace Dungeon on the Isle of Quoldenas. To get there, just take the portal located in the middle of Shatrath City. The final boss, Kilthas Sunstrider, drops it at a 3% rate. Moving on to Wrath content, first up we have the Blue Protodrake from the Heroic Utgard Pinnacle. You can find this dungeon high up in the sky right here. The third boss, Scotty the Ruthless, drops it at a 1% rate. To kill him, you need to kill the Harpooner mobs that spawn, pick up the Harpoons, wait till Scotty is in front of the turrets, then click on the turrets to shoot him down. Next up, we have our first 100% drop, and that's the Bronze Drake. You can find this in the Culling of Stratholm dungeon on Heroic Mode, which is in the Caverns of Time in Tanneris. There's a portal to this area in the Portal Room in the Broken Isles Dalaran. To get this one, you just need to reach this area, right outside the final boss room before the timer runs out, which is pretty trivial with the increased level cap. To get here, just take a left before entering the final fight with Malganis. This next one is kind of different because it's not tied to a dungeon, but rather a daily, and that's the White Polar Bear. 
You get this from a cache that you get from some dailies in the Storm Peak Zone, but to unlock those dailies you have to do some questing. It isn't too bad, it takes about 30 minutes to unlock them. I'll have a link to the start of it in the description. Once you're able to enter the Bruin Hildar area disguised as a Vrykul, complete a few more quests until you unlock the dailies that award this cache. Moving on to Cataclysm content, we have two more in the Zul'Gurub dungeon, which you can find in the Northern Stranglethorn Vale zone in the Eastern Kingdoms. You have to enter this one on Heroic mode, and you can get the Swift Zillion Panther from the High Priestess Kilnara boss, and the Armored Rizashi Raptor from the Bloodlord Mandakir, both at a 1% rate. And we also have one in the other troll dungeon, Zul Aman, which you can find in the Ghost Lands. This one drops the Amani Battle Bear. Now, this is a 100% drop if you complete the gauntlet in time. To do this, you need to kill the four animal bosses, the Eagle, Bear, Dragonhawk, and Lynx, and release the prisoners before they die. Very easy to do nowadays since you one-shot everything. Note for the Bear boss, you need to kill his guards before he'll run up to his platform. And for the Lynx, you need to take the side entrance to get in. I killed them in this order, freed all of the prisoners near the bosses, and in the Lynx room I got the satchel which had the mount. So, do the same and you should be good to go. So, that's it for the daily mounts, let's move on to the weeklies. There are none for vanilla, so jumping straight into the Burning Crusade here, we have the Ashes of Alar. This is in the I Raid, located in the Tempest Keep Hub in the Nether Storm Zone. It drops off of the final boss, Kelfa Sunstrider, at around a 2% drop rate. And a tip is that you can go straight to him, so feel free to skip the other bosses unless you want the transmogs. Next, we have the Fiery Warhorse from the original Karazhan raid. This drops off of the Atumin the Huntsman at a 1% rate. You can find him near the entrance by taking a left. Next, we have Invincible in the Ice Crown Citadel located in Ice Crown. This has a 1% chance to drop from the Lich King on Heroic 25 man mode, and you can use that alt farming method I mentioned earlier to make it way faster. And the same goes for Mimiron's head from Aldor, which you can find in the Storm Peaks. This mount drops from Yogg-Saron on 25 man mode with zero watchers. That means you don't talk to any of the big NPCs overlooking the chamber. Once again, a 1% chance to drop here. And another tip I'll share here is that you can skip the first four bosses just by clicking on the teleport pad and going to the tram. From here, just kill Mimiron and take the tram back and kill the other watchers to unlock the path to Yogg. The next two are actually 100% drops, the Black and Twilight Drakes. These are found in the Obsidian Sanctum raid located under the Wormrus Temple and Dragonblight. To get these mounts, you need to kill Sir Therion without killing any of the mini boss drakes to the side, which is pretty easy because you can one-shot them. The Black Drake drops from 10 man, and the Twilight Drake drops from 25 man. Next, we have the Blue and Azure Drakes. These drop from Malagos, located in the Eye of Eternity in the Borean Tundra. It's the highest portal and the Nexus hub. And they both drop from 10 or 25 man at around a 3% rate. Next up is the Grand Black War Mammoth from the Vault of Archivon in Wintergrasp. To get there, there should be a nearby portal pad that you can click on, and from there you just walk in. This one is a little tricky because your team has to be in control of Wintergrasp for you to be able to zone into the raid. There are four bosses in here, and each one has a chance to drop the Mammoth at a 1% rate. It drops from both 10 men and 25 men, but you should run it on 25 for more transmog drops. Lastly for Wrath Mounts, we have the Anixian Drake. This drops from the re-released Anixia's Lair, located in the Dustwell Marsh in the Kalimdor Continent. As for the difficulty, it drops from both 10 or 25 man mode at a 1% drop rate. And moving on to Cataclysm content, we have the Experiment 12B from the Dragon Soul Raid. You can find this raid in the Caverns of Time in Tanaris. And it has a 1% drop chance from the Ultraxian boss. You can get it from any difficulty and any size, but you should do the raid on Heroic 25 man since you get more gold and gear. Also in this raid, we have the Life Binders Handmaiden. This drops from the final boss, Deathwing, on Heroic mode, either 10 or 25 man at a 1% chance. And lastly, we have the Blazing Drake. This also drops from Deathwing, but only on normal mode, either 10 or 25 man. The Spine of Deathwing fight is a little tricky, and you'll most likely die if you try it without knowing the strategy. I do have a very old video explaining it though, if you end up needing it. I'll have a link to it in the description. 
Heading on over to the Firelands, located in Mount Hygel, we have the Flame Talon of Alice Razor. This drops off of the Alice Razor boss on any difficulty, but once again, you should run it on 25 man heroic for more gold and gear. As usual, the chance is quite low at around 2%. The final boss, Ragnaros, also drops a mount called the Pure Blood Firehawk. 1% chance for this, and once again, any difficulty. And lastly for Cataclysm, we have the Drake of the South Wind from the Throne of the Four Winds Raid. You can find it high up in the sky in the Aldum Zone in Kalimdor. The second boss here, Alakir, drops it at a 1% rate on any size or difficulty. Moving on to the next expansion, Pandaria, we have 8 total, 4 in raids, and 4 from world bosses. From this expansion onwards, the bonus rolling system was implemented. So, this does work for the 4 Pandaria world boss mounts, which I'll go over, but none of the ones in the raids. You need certain charms to bonus roll, and it varies depending on the boss. For the sake of brevity though, I'll just have links to those charms in the description so you can figure out where to get them. Anyways, first up we have the Astral Cloud Serpent from the Mogushan Vaults Raid in the Kunlai Summit. This is a 1% drop from Elagon, the 5th boss in the raid on any difficulty and any size, excluding LFR which is true for all of these Pandaria raids. Something I should say at this point, the raids are going to start getting harder. Mogushan isn't too bad if you're a decently geared 110, but at this point, you may want to start scaling down the player size for the sake of speed. Personally, I still recommend running it on 25 man heroic mode though since you get a decent amount of gold from the drops. It's also speculated that these mounts have a higher chance to drop from heroic mode, but I haven't seen any confirmation of this so I don't know about that. But you might want to run it on 25 man heroic just to be safe. Anyways, next we have two in the Throne of Thunder raid. You can find this on the Isle of Thunder which you need an introductory quest to enter. I'll have links to both factions in the description. This is also pretty easy to solo on 25 man heroic at this point if you're decently geared, although it's quite long and takes around an hour to do a full clear. The first mount is the spawn of Horridan from the Horridan boss. This has a 2-ish percent drop chance. And we also have the clutch of Jakun from the Jakun boss, also around a 2% drop chance. Like I said, pretty easy to solo now, but if you do end up having trouble, I did make a full guide for a 25 man heroic solo that'll have in the description. Lastly for Pandaria, we have the Korkran Juggernaut in the Mythic Siege of Orgrimmar. This drops from the very last boss, Garrosh Hellscream, at a 1% rate. As for the solo ability, it's of course the hardest out of the Pandaria raids. Particularly the first boss, Immersius, just due to his mechanics. You can kill him and the entire raid solo, it just takes a very long time, and this is where you might want to start bringing a friend. Another YouTuber, Asmongold, made a solo guide for this, which I'll have a link in the description if you end up needing it. As I said, we also have 4 world bosses that drop mounts. So, these won't be up all the time, and there's something that you'll have to actively check. And, just like the normal raids, you can only get loot from them once a week. First, we have the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent from the Shav Anger in the Kunlai Summit. He has different spawn points as you can see from this map. You also have the Son of Galleon from Galleon in the Valley of the Four Winds. The Thundering Cobalt Cloud Serpent from Nalak, who spawns just outside of the Throne of Thunder in the Isle of Thunder. And lastly, the Cobalt Primordial Direhorn from Undasta on the Isle of Giants. All of these have a very low drop rate of less than 1%. It looks like it's actually 0.1%. So very rare, and like I said, bring those bonus roll tokens with you since they do work for these mounts. And next, moving on to everyone's favorite expansion, the Warlords of Draenor. First, we have the Iron Hoof Destroyer. You can find this one in the Blackrock Foundry Mythic Mode, located in Northern Gorgrand. It drops from the final boss, Blackhand, at a 1% rate. To fight him, just like most of the other raids, you do have to clear through the whole raid. And, since it's Draenor content, things will really start taking a long time for you to kill. The Blast Furnace boss also takes a super long time unless you have a priest since you need to mind control one of the enemies there. Other than that though, the other bosses don't have any weird mechanics and are technically soloable if you know what you're doing. I won't go over them all since I don't want this video to be an hour long so I'll leave that up to you. I'm sure there are plenty of videos showing how to go through each boss. A tip I'll share though is after the Iron Maiden fight is to take a right through all of these boxes and pick up the Sigil of the Black Hand quest. 
This allows you to skip right to Blackhand, provided you loot 4 quest items from each of the final bosses and each of the wings. So, the best strategy I think is to clear it with friends until you complete this, and from then on, solo Blackhand since you can skip right to them. There's a similar quest in the Hellfire Citadel, located in the Tannin Jungle. This one lets you skip right to Archimonde, the last boss of the raid. He drops the Felsteel Annihilator at a 1% rate on Mythic Mode. You get the quest from Khadgar right at the entrance, and the Gorfine boss is the one who drops the quest item. So, once again, clear it 4 times with friends, and then solo from there if you have enough gear. Asmongold also did a solo guide for him, which I'll have linked in the description. Lastly for Draenor, we have the Solar Spirehawk. This drops from the Rukmar boss, located in the Spires of Iraq. It has just a 0.1% chance to drop, and unlike the Pandaria world bosses, it's not bonus rollable. Lastly, we have all of the Legion expansion mounts. These mounts are current content when this video was made, so there's no soloing going on here. First up, we have Midnight from the re-released Karazhan. You can find this in the Deadwind Pass, right above the normal Karazhan on this little walkway. This has a 1% chance to drop from the Atum and the Huntsman boss on Mythic Mode, similar to the Fiery Warhorse from the normal Karazhan. From the same dungeon, we also have the Smoldering Ember Worm. This drops from the Nightbane boss, which is a secret boss in the dungeon. When you first zone in, you'll have 8 minutes to start a gauntlet to run through the dungeon to click a bunch of crystals until you reach the boss. Once again, for the sake of the video not being an hour long, I'll just have an external link to a guide for that that covers it fully in the description. There's a weird story going on with the drop rate. It has a 20% chance to drop per person who's not loot locked. So, if you're watching this at a later expansion, it'll have a 20% chance to drop if you're soloing it. And nope, it's not bonus rollable. Next, we have the Abyss Worm from Mistress Sazine, located in the Tomb of Sargeras in the Broken Shore. This drops from any difficulty, including LFR mode. It's still pretty new, so we don't have good data yet, but it seems like it might be around a 3% drop rate. And next, we have the Felblaze Infernal. This is a 1% drop from Gul'dan and the Nighthold Raid in the Suramar Zone on any difficulty, excluding LFR. And, similar to the Draenor Raids, there's a quest called the Talisman of the Shaldurai, which you can grab to skip to the final two bosses, Elisand and Gul'dan. A nice little time saver. The alternative version, the Hellfire Infernal, is currently a 100% drop off of Gul'dan in Mythic Mode at the time this video was made. But, when the next expansion rolls around, it'll be a 1% drop, so get it while you can. We also have two more in the currently unreleased raid, Antorus the Burning Throne. The Antoran Charhound drops in the Farg slash Shatug fight, which is a second boss fight. Like I said, this raid isn't out yet, so there's not much info. If it follows the scheme of things with the Abyss Worm though, it'll drop in any difficulty at around a 3% rate. We also have the Shackled Urzul from the final boss, Argus the Unmaker. This only drops on Mythic Mode, again at a 100% rate for now, and then 1% when the next expansion hits. So, that's it! Those are all of the weekly and daily mounts that you can farm as of the Legion expansion. One last thing I want to mention is a simple Armory Mount Planner tool. This is a website that lets you load up your character, and it'll show you which mounts you have and which ones you don't. If you click the Show Planner button, it'll give you some directions on how to reach all of these dungeons and raids, and the fastest way to do that. It's a really handy tool if you plan on getting as many as you can, and I'll have a link to it in the description. And one last note to end it on is just due to the size of this video, I'm sure there'll be some errors, so I'll have a pinned comment with any corrections, so check that out before you start any of this. Anyways, I hope you found the video helpful, like it if you liked it, and thanks for watching. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.